Okay, present evening for those in Malaysia and in this time zone. So first, I'd like to explain about the evaluation, which just now you have heard the World Championship of Public Speaking speech, and I'd like to relate it to the hybrid meeting environment. Now first, just a brief introduction. Look at this, just, I was a district 102 director, where you are under, and that was in year 2020-21. So at the moment, I'm free. So, and of course, I'd like to share with you my knowledge. So first, what hybrid meeting is like, what you are experiencing now. You can see, we have our fellow friends on Zoom, as well as some of you in. So what's the difference between hybrid and non-hybrid? Now, I would like to ask you, do you think there is any difference, or it's the same? Yeah, different. Different. Yeah, different. Very different. Very different. Why different? Uh, because of the vibe, and then you look at the audience uh, lives. It's not we are looking at the screen. So, all right. So, if you have a mix of speakers, some speaker are handsome in person, and some person <laughs> are online. Is this, does it mean that your evaluation will be different? Mm. I mean like okay. evaluation style could be this. I mean like whatever you evaluate, the, the, the criteria you evaluate should be the same. Just the differences are how the virtual uh, audience, uh, sorry, how the virtual speaker use their stage and everything and uh, differences between the physical one. Okay, thank you very much uh, Alif and Zila, our past and present division H director for your insight. Yes, the same is what Zila says correct. The same is the evaluation criteria. The evaluation is the same. The only difference is the platform not the same, but it's still the same. You are in person here, so you can see, you can see that some of our, our online audience are following us online. So when you get a <coughs> meeting or a contest where you have a mix of speakers who are online or who are in person, the criteria is the same. It's just your mood of you is not the same. For example, if Zila is right in front of you in person and you are in person, and then you will be able to evaluate in person. Now say some of our speakers later, the, our role players, some of them are online. They will be in the screen projector here. So you need to imagine, you, you need to disregard what is outside the screen and just evaluate the speech, not the speaker. Have that in mind. You are evaluating the speech. You are not evaluating the speaker. And when, whether the speaker is in person, then of course we evaluate the full body, as you can see. If the speaker is online, you evaluate based on what you see on the, on the screen. That's all. And, and focus on the speech. Hence, what I'm sharing now is the same criteria, be it online or in person. But thank you very much. Alif and Zila, both are correct. It's the same and not the same. <laughs> First, our evaluation criteria. The benefit that it gives is the same. We provide immediate feedback within the same meeting. We use the methods for improvement. We offer what are the areas for improvement. And we build and maintain their self-esteem of the members. This has no change. You do not, for example, don't give immediate feedback. You do not, not offer mental improvement if it's online. Same. You also want to maintain the self-esteem of the speaker, be it online or in person. Same as our online uh, attendees if they are doing evaluation. Same thing. Based on what they see on the screen, they will give this benefit to you. Then, 
when the evaluator when the evaluator talks, of course the speaker listens. Vice versa, when the speaker speaks, you need to listen and take notes and so you can give the evaluation accordingly. So thank you. So how to evaluate effectively? So first, this is only for a meeting. You go to contest, you can't speak. You don't even know who is the speaker beforehand. So you speak what is the pathway objective. You speak to them about evaluation guideline. You need to pre, you know, so when they speak, you can know what to expect and any concern. And during the speech, you need to show that you are listening. Now, is there any difference during the speech, whether you are online or in person? You show you are interested, is there any difference? No difference, right? You are still showing you are interested, whether you are sitting here and you are in front of the speaker, or the speaker is online. Vice versa, when our evaluator is online, they are also looking at you on their screen. They show that they are interested and put themselves at the position of the speaker. And of course, take notes. Uh, sorry, there is no perfect recorder in our brain. You need to take notes. Otherwise, it's not easy to remember. And during your evaluation, you need to listen. Choose your words carefully. Evaluate the speech. As I mentioned just now, evaluate the speech, not the person. And you need to promote self-esteem. Now, how many of you have done evaluation before? Three, four, five, six. Okay, handful. Yes. And uh, have you experienced hearing? How do you feel when you hear a good evaluation feedback? You know, good and all. Motivated to do better. Motivated to do better. Thank you, President Hillman. Yes, motivated to do better. Any? Azila? How do you feel? Feel great and feel uh, motivated to do more. Uh, yeah, again. To do more speeches. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Does, it, okay. Does it help you to become better? Yes. Yes. Does it make you want to do more speeches? Yes. Okay, well. Happy. Yes, yes. Uh, there's one in the chat. And okay. La, that's the difficult one, but let's share. How about have you experienced hearing uh not so good about um uh, not so good means are saying, well you are not good and this and that. Ali, how do you feel? Feel demotivated. You feel demotivated. Uh, what about? Yes, sir. What do you think? You yeah, think? I think that even the negative feedback, it is a breakfast of the leaders. Ah, there, there is, so you feel good. Say, yeah, feel good. If the evaluator says, if no. I'm just saying, I'm yeah. just if evaluator, your speech is rubbish. Yeah. What do you think? How do you feel if they you hear that kind of comment? It depends. If, if he is right. Okay, so I will take it uh, positively. Oh, you and take it positively. Oh, yeah, I, I you will love this evaluation. Yeah. I want to give you a huge <laughs> shout out. Okay, so this one. Will you still deli will you deliver myself. your next speech? I do. You will still do your next speech? Uh, yes. yes. Oh, great. Very more and more and more. Really, really, I like this, this lady. She did yeah. very good, very good step. Really advanced step compared to others. Uh, Maybe okay. compared to me. I, I, I did. I did I haven't carried you to, to to go uh, the stage and talk. She yeah. she now uh, now really did um, a good step, advanced step to speak. Yeah. Thank so you very much. Sir. Her speak was rubbish. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but she did really a very good step to uh, go for a for one. That's good. Okay. Well, that yes, Zila. How do you have you heard that some? Really? First time yeah. when my first time heard about uh, things that not so good or not really that bad but not so good, I feel like mm, yeah I need to do um, other way to make it better. Or uh, and also I think do I need to repeat this speech? That's the word that I oh, I don't want to repeat. Can I just like complete it without repeating? <laughs> yeah, that's the things that you might. <laughs> okay, so you if I may you also have add, your doubt. Yeah. Yes, sir. I don't want to. Yeah, if I may also add. Yes. Sometimes you you need to take feedback with a pinch of salt because I've been given a lot of feedback after delivering my speeches on other meetings and people have told me that my speech is not rubbish but they said Malaysians won't understand me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so so if I was to take that seriously, 
I don't think I would have had the courage to come and stand in front of you and speak yeah. the way I speak, right? Sure. So don't always, because not everyone sees the speech as a speech. Sometimes people just kind of, you know, keep that out of the cloud. They see you as a person. So always take feedback with a pinch of salt, reflect on yourself, and just do the best. Yes. Right. Good sharing. I think you all have a positive attitude to uh, the evaluation. And that's why you are still around. I think those who, well, at some times, perhaps there might be some evaluator who might have given uh, an example. You are rubbish. You are, you know, I was good for nothing, but just make an example. And they don't appear in the club anymore. Yes, ah, not here. No. Those are here, they already toughen up. So <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, our guests, the worry it holds muscles, we educate to be valid to motivate, irregardless whether online, in person, hybrid, however the person low, the person might have some challenges. It is the speech that the person deliver, not the person. So we focus on the speech. So therefore Honest evaluation are upbeat, means positive and encouraging. At the same time, we still offer areas or suggestions for improvement. And if the suggestions are, again, the suggestions are personal. It is not, we think that you are. No, it's just, I think you are. So that it is different person might have different opinion. Just like, say, like our Ariel uh, say, take it with a pinch of salt. So it's important in Toastmasters. No Toastmasters club is fulfilling the obligation to members unless it brings them the maximum training on the art of constructive criticism. That is the evaluation. And these are the exact words from our founder, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley. Personally speaking, Dr. Rasis Matley is our founder, and the important about Toastmasters, besides public speaking, we also have speakers, we have evaluation. Evaluation needs to be done constructively in the right spirit. So, this is example feedback versus advice. So, for example, a person evaluator says, I have difficulty hearing you. As Zila, how would you how would say it as an evaluator? As an evaluator? Yes. Or as a speaker? Would you say I have difficulty hearing you? Oh, no. Okay, what would you say? Uh, if I want to mention about I had difficulty hearing you, maybe I will just say I think um no no I think. <laughs> I think it's that thing, right? Like, I should listen, right? So just now I listened that your tonation is a bit low. So maybe it would be good you can use a louder voice. So everyone in the audience, whether virtual or physical, can listen to you well sometimes. So to my fellow audience, which is sounds better? I have difficulty hearing you or what our Zila says, which evaluation do you prefer to hear? Zila. 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 Zila, okay, good. So that is the difference between her feedback versus advice. So second, you should improve your eye contact. Mm -hmm. Ibrahim. 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 Oh. Ibrahim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Ibrahim. Yeah, I was to say uh, Ibrahim, but I was to say you should remember the, the yeah. word that this person, this evaluator oh, used. You should good. improve your eye contact. Mm. How would you say as an evaluator? As an evaluator, maybe I should see that uh, the speaker should try to get, try to uh, engage with the audience. Okay, right? Or maybe, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, very good. And how, all right, audience, which do you prefer to hear? You should improve your eye contact or the evaluation from Mr. Ibrahim. Right. You should 
English with audience. Mm. Oh, we share. So, Mr. Ibrahim. So, that is the difference between advice or something that sometimes we hear from our superior. <laughs> they will say, I have difficulty hearing you. Speak on the. <laughs> you should improve your eye contact. You're not looking at me. You can say, see the difference between a Toastmasters feedback versus advice. How about you, you use different tones throughout your speech? <laughs> yeah, oh, I want to try. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think um, I think you should if it's if he was using the the person was using it as a positive thing, so if the different tones were uh, were used in a positive manner during the speech, I would say um, uh, it was great that you have used um, different tones to, to show your audience uh, and to to let your feelings be felt by, by your audience. So uh, it was great that you did it. Yeah. Uh, how do you, okay, which feedback do you prefer to hear? Yeah. Yeah, I think we know. Yeah. Yes. We yeah. All right, thank you very much. So you prefer to hear this rather than this feedback from our and Ibrahim, from Ibrahim, 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 rather than the advice that sometimes we hear, right? So that's the difference between a feedback on the evaluator and advice. So the evaluation criteria, as you have one of you, those are the evaluation resources. This, this is a general evaluation uh, form. If you have a pathway uh, specific project, they will have a specific project, but this is a general use, it used across all the schools. So this is from Toastmasters or ORG, yes, from our Toastmasters International. And if you see the next next one, is the evaluation criteria. Now this criteria, now you are not judge, but what I would like to share with you is what, what constitutes a good evaluator or excellent evaluator when you take part in such contests. These are what the judges are looking at. Analytical quality, recommendation, and summation, and also technique. Does anywhere say, or oh, is the evaluator uh, in person or online? Do you say anywhere? Do you say anywhere like the, whether the evaluator used visual aid or presentation style? It just focus on your analytical quality, your recommendation, your technique, and your summation. So all these are the content of your evaluation. So now, is there any difference between online or in person? No. No. Right? So all this, you can do the same whether you are online or in person. How about if the speaker is online or in person? Will it make any difference to you? Yes. Yeah, yes, there is a difference. Oh, still difference? Yeah. Because I can't see his body language, eye contact. Many things I will miss. Ah. I will not focus on him. Really. Ah, I see. Alright, Sila, what is your response? Just not. I miss something. Is it this, whether the speaker uh, virtual or online? If the speaker is virtual or online, uh, virtual versus the speaker is in person. Oh. Does it make a difference in your evaluation? Uh, no, 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 it won't, it won't. Uh, mm. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. So it doesn't make a difference. Alright. Yeah. Yes and no. Yes, that means you can't see the rest of the body. But you can still see the speaker in the screen. So typically, you can see from our online audience, perhaps this part of their body, which means usually their face and their shoulders mm -hmm. and all, can be seen on online mm -hmm. uh, or through the Zoom. Like if they totally off their camera, of course, that's <laughs> <it's laughs> <not laughs> all the together. But you can still see a part of them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as evaluator, you evaluate based on what you see and what you hear. You have seen this slide. So what he does below, beyond the screen, you do not need to evaluate. So you just ignore it, pretend it doesn't exist. Just this part you evaluate. 
I don't know what you do with the rest of the body. Well, that's not your concern as an evaluator. You evaluate think the speech. Of course, it include the body language, but it's this part of the body. If you are looking at me, like you are in person, and I am in person, of course, you can see my full body, top to bottom. So that is the only difference. The evaluation content, ah, you see, how you analyze your recommendation, your technique, and your summation is to the, the speech and based on what you see on that screen. But thank you, this is a good feedback. Now, evaluation is a kind of coaching, especially if the members, every member, whether experienced or new, are there to improve, are there wanting to improve. So hearing your evaluation gives tremendous influence to how the member goes. So if a good and effective evaluation will be like a coaching, whereby you can identify the goals for improvement, you can define strategies to reach the goals, establish timeline, and follow up. So for example, this is example of a idea evaluation. Okay, one of you read up. Okay, human. Yes. Susie, I noticed that you were averting your eyes from the audience. One technique. I have tried is to think of the room as individuals instead of one group and look at each person for a few seconds before moving on to the next person. On your next speech, maybe you should try that. Oh. And, and, and that's meeting. Oh, and, and next meeting. Hi Susie, I noticed during your speech today you really made an effort to look at me and the other members. Great job, give it up. And she like it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are uh, audience, if you, you are the speaker, you hear this kind of feedback. How do you feel? Okay. Uh, encouraging. Encouraging. Feel right. I want to do my next speech. Okay, great. Looking forward to your speech. That's the catch. <laughs> You, um, it gives you not only what you can improve on, uh, but make sure that you are doing it right. So make sure that you are on the right path and you are continuing to improve, uh, which of course uh, will give you a lot of uh, a lot of uh, momentum to move forward and um, just uh, keep getting better. Okay, good. So this is an example of evaluation. So in closing, as the evaluation, you connect. To your opening statement, you make a statement, evaluation, you summarize your key points and give, well, if you have time, because it's this, your evaluation is just two to three minutes, flies very fast. You see, the time is nearly up, then you don't go and <laughs> punching a person. No, but if you can, you give a story. If you give a story, it will be even more powerful because you give an example. And you encourage the listeners because not only the speaker is listening to you, also, the audience are listening and learning. So you're encouraged to apply what they hear and learn. So any questions? Hmm. Okay, I think I have a question. I just like okay. Okay. Yes, good. Um, okay, uh, uh, means I just would like to ask. Um, as a contestant, right? Because in the future, uh, in just like around the corner, we will have a con human speech and evaluation contest, right? Yes. So as a, a contestant, um, what could be the advice for them to like um, do a good evaluation? Is it like um, just focusing on the way that just now you mentioned um, opening? Uh, it's just a usual, usual. Uh, Evaluation like giving an opening statement, and then uh, what could be the uh, good about your uh, speech, and also what could be the improvement, and closing, which is summarize all those, or 
is there any like styles and things that they, they can do uh, a different yeah a good uh, example to be a good contestant <laughs> ah okay so Right. Important is anyone have an answer to that? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Um, brought in. I think um, evaluations are very important uh, in how they uh, first you need to deliver to the person uh, how they can improve and what they did good, of course, because it's very important to tell someone what they did good first. Uh, so, first, there is Makes your evaluation upbeat, and so uh, as as mentioned, of course, uh, during your presentation. So we, we you have an upbeat and positive thing, and that lets uh, the person you're evaluating know what they did good. So they continue doing that thing. Maybe they didn't do it on purpose, or maybe it just happened. But once you tell them this is good, they will remember. They will keep doing it. And of course, um, you tell them what they can improve on. But of course, if you tell someone. Uh, anyone, if you give them the feedback in a bad way, no one's gonna take it, right? If if you saw someone throw something in the street and you tell him, hey, pick it up, he's not gonna pick it up. If you tell him, hey, please, would you mind picking that up? He's more likely to accept your evaluation that way. So, and it also it keeps the whole environment much nicer. No one is so, feels tension. Then um, that's that's the real importance of the evaluation. Making sure that everything. Um, is smooth and that they are getting the benefit without any of the friction, I would say. No friction. Right. Okay, thank you very much. You have well answered. Yes, on you highlight the good points positively, but it's not whitewashing. Whitewashing means you are not giving any area improvement. You give an area area improvement in a positive manner on the way that can further improve and give feedback rather than advice and you need to submission because after the one, two, three point you might need to go back you may need to submission so they will be able to take home with that message okay thank you Ibrahim yes Ibrahim Ibrahim <laughs> <laughs> Just I wanted some suggestion of feedback maybe because I I know we are we are like a listener as a we are we need to become a good listener. Yeah, so if you say myself I am not a good listener because I'm I'm a kinesthetic kinesthetic type of person. Alright, so I'm a visualizer. I, I love to see visual instead of listen to people. Mm -hmm. So it's very troublesome for me if like say I wanted to evaluate evaluate based on the speech some kind. So let's say you guys can maybe Mamzi or anyone can give a suggestion how this uh kinesthetic, kinesthetic type of person can improve their listening skills. It's because this one is for evaluation, right? Okay, thank you. So, any feedback from our experience? Uh, Daniel? Or, or maybe I, I can just, I, I, I don't have experience, but I uh, can just give a suggestion. Because as a kinesthetic person, you are looking at the uh, things uh, that moving, right? But this is, this is, this is, this is, I need to practice a lot. Uh, yes. So, yes. That, that's the problem. Uh, um, <laughs> The best way is to look at their body language, but it may be difficult if the speaker have a limit body language. Then you will be a bit difficult to evaluate them if you use the basis of body language. But if the speaker like Mas Mahadi just now, you actually can do evaluation because if you follow his body language, you are able to capture his speech. His body language totally well worth it speech but if the speaker is not that good I mean like have, using a limit body language that will be difficult for you to evaluate based on body language itself yeah practice make perfect yeah. two <laughs> let's see back to you I don't know if I have all right all right thank you all right, all right. But yes very correct yes you can give your feedback you don't have to turn your words around to make it well, perfectly fine for the speakers, 
But what you need to pay attention, not to go until the extreme, like you're rubbish, mm -hmm. uh, good for nothing, that is the extreme. Mm -hmm. Every one of us, we, by the time we do our third speech or fourth speech, we will get to evaluate. This is part of the project. And then there is a pathways project on teaching us how to evaluate the right manner with many examples. As much as possible, go towards the positive type, but it did not say perfect. If you just want the perfect evaluator, there probably be only a few in the world. But every Toastmasters, I need to aware that there are areas that we need to look out for and then you become better because you hear good evaluation or some mm, evaluation you will try to do a better one next time compared to the uh, evaluation the not so good evaluation you do not want this kind of feeling to the other speakers so that is the spirit of the program right. any further questions Yes. I have so, one question. Yes. Uh, you noticed like in uh, the slides, like uh, and all the discussion was uh, how to deliver the good points and the bad points and how to conclude, but how to start the evaluation and catch the audience attentions. How should I start my evaluation? Open my evaluation. Should I go directly straight to the good points? Okay, I noticed that you have a good eye contact, your body language good, but is there anything before that? I should say to catch my audience. The preamble. Exactly. There's only three, two to three minutes. There's so much time. Yeah, but is there a way for that? Yes. Opening statement. Catchy, catchy opening statement. Catchy evaluation. <laughs> what is required is positive points or upbeat and encouraging. This positive and offer in your improvement. You can have a preamble, something catchy, but bear in mind there is a shortage. The more you do that, you will have less points. So keep that. It will great because you can get the attention. It will be great, but you need to do it in the right manner. So it will be good. You time your time and see if you keep going over time, then probably reduce a bit. And you don't need to show the whole program because it's two or three minutes very fast. Mm -hmm. And the reason why two to three minutes, Alif, you think why do why does evaluation is only two to three minutes? Why not give them five to seven minutes? Let's be another speech. Right? <laughs> it would be too much for the yeah, speaker to too much for the speaker to digest. Yeah, they already digest it. Positive area improvement and probably one, two, or three. Some they might offer a lot, and that's two to three minutes. It's a lot for the speak or speaker you know, to remember. And probably he might just remember one of the many points. And you already have a chance because you keep on coming to those muscles meeting. You will always have a chance to evaluate either the same speaker or the next speaker. So two to three minutes, there's a limit how much you can put the preamble before you go straight to the positive side. But yes, it's a good to attract, but keep it within time, short and within time, and effective. But sure it's effective. Okay, thank you. Right, and we probably have time for perhaps one evaluation. So who would like to give a practice evaluation? You might be the only one, because we go over time and we will, we will need to stop because <laughs> we need to keep the time. Who would like to deliver a two to three minutes evaluation? Is it for the speech we heard? For the speech yeah. you heard, uh, yes. Yes. Okay, regarding mass marketing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. correct. Yeah, regarding mass marketing. Yeah, really. Um, come in front. Come in front. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. My, my name is Talas. I am, I am from Yemen. Uh, I used to come to here three years ago. That's why I call it a place. In this place, I came late because uh, I tried to find a place. So. Finally, I'm the I reach you. Um, anyway, uh, really, uh, all of that the video was not straight, um, so I couldn't um, yeah, match the, um, the voice with, with uh, movement. But anyway, uh, really, he, he's good. Mass matching is very good in, um, uh, in movement on the plate. He was moving uh, nicely. He was moving like 
one yeah, he, yeah, he can control the um, the stage, so he will, um, will be very good at that. Also, yeah, he he did a very good start with his smile. So really, he start first of all with all anything. So he attract the attention of the people. Then he start with the smile. Uh, all the time, the smile was in his face, and that was a very good time. Really, he, um, he, would, he should be, uh, I have the same problem like him. Slow talking. So he, I think he, he should be more, be more faster. Uh, he be faster in talking, it's better. So I think this is a weak point for him. He was talking slowly. That um, is absolutely good. Um, also, I think he, he used um, not high level English language. I think in yeah, the simple words he used it. So he didn't use um, high level uh, English language. That's all. That was done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, audience. I think you are past Mahathir. You hear this information. How do you feel? Mm. Yeah, you or, feel or do you feel there are areas that he could improve more? Yeah, you first of all, uh, you feel motivated, like there is area to improve. And uh, I think, yeah, there is, uh, regardless of, of how, how well you reach, there is always uh, place to become better. Yeah, um, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's how, how I would feel. <laughs> All right. So you will give him hundred months for evaluation. Um, <laughs> no, I, I would say like of course there's also always room for improvement in terms of the evaluation. Right? Uh, I mean, I I have my own perspective of the evaluation, and so uh, I think uh, oh. there's different perspectives of how the evaluation can go. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I would say that maybe some points I have, maybe he didn't notice or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So what are the points that you um, would have? Oh okay. yeah, uh, I mean, um, uh, one of the points I felt, uh, first of all, his, his speech, uh, as, as uh, it's a world-class speech, and we can see that um, he, he has very strong uh, expressions. But I would I would feel that the speech would become much more powerful if if the if the character he was relating to um, was closer to us. When he mentioned that they were in a party, he painted a very beautiful picture, and then suddenly he mentioned that uh, his mother's friend mentioned uh, an actor. We don't know what this actor looks like, and uh, I felt like. That didn't paint the picture in all of our minds. We didn't know what he was talking about. So I feel it's the job of the speaker to make sure that everything he's saying is as relatable as possible to the audience. So uh, perhaps uh, if, he, if he had mentioned it in another synonym, I felt that uh, his, his message would have been uh, conveyed better. Uh, that that was, would be one of uh, my, my tips, I'd say. Um, uh, another thing is that I felt that the expression rough and tough was slightly overused. It was it was definitely very strong, and I understand the purpose of repeating it, but uh, perhaps uh, maybe not overstating it too much uh, because it may fatigue the audience. So perhaps using more creative language would, would elevate the speech even higher. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, that's my point that I would add. To an evaluation, yeah. Right. Are there any other feedback for the evaluator? Actually, when I heard Ibrahim Junior's, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I noticed that that, that uh, there's a lot of improvement need to be done by my mind. Yeah. I thought it's quite perfect. Good point. Good point. Good point. Right. Well, Zila, do you have any? Me. Mm. <laughs> 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 it's so difficult. 
I think I need to put in goddess the land. <laughs> for evaluation. Alright, um, uh, I, from the point, I, I can't remember, your, what is your name? Uh, Tala. Tala. Okay, Tala and Ibrah. Ibrah already mentioned most of the things that I actually wrote down as well. But maybe the things to add on from uh, Mas Mahadi, I really love how he structured his speech. And he made use of the stage uh, of his storyline. Uh, starting from the opening and then he started with the things that he actually as a teenager, a rebellious teenager. And then he, uh, the, from the dialogue of his mom, father and his son. And then he use, made use that storyline uh, into his, uh, uh, using his stage uh, to represent his storyline. And then um, I really love the things that he used the right time to use the speed pace. Sometimes it is very fast, sometimes it's really low, and also sometimes it pauses a bit to just like make audience listen well about it. So I really love that. The things that um, for the improvement, I, I, I like what Ibrahim mentioned about rough and tough. Like I, I, I don't know, it's my only device. I feel like a uh, repetitive word, rough and tough, will be uh, two um, huge things. Because women, even though you say they're able to make, uh, make themselves as a strong, as a rough and tough, but sometimes they are very soft. Rough and tough is too huge for a woman. Yeah, so yeah, that's my feeling. Thank you. Oh, very good understand. Good feedback from the mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Alright, anyway, well done. And how about our online audience? Do any of you have any feedback? Please unmute and speak. Who are they online? Azriel? Gila? Azriel? I don't know where you yeah, yes, just unmute. Oh, oh, uh, if it's perfect, you just say perfect. Yes, Azriel, want to say something? Yes, Azriel. Yes, Azriel. Yes, Azriel. Yes, Azriel. There is no ultimately perfect evaluation because each evaluator and different. And we only have two to three minutes because then you will be overwhelmed with you know, too many pointers and information. 
you will always get opportunity to be evaluated or to improve further at your next speech. So don't be disheartened in case you hear some tough one. And of course for evaluators, remember, be positive, upbeat, and encouraging. At the same time, don't whitewash, break down. Uh, any improvement, do give suggestions for improvement. If it's not, if it's pretty perfect, as Azra said, yes, his speech is perfect. No more area of improvement. That's fine as well. You can still say perfect. It's not that you're purposely looking for uh, fault or trouble. Therefore, evaluate to elevate, elevate and motivate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, distinguished Toastmasters Ming Zhe, as for that wonderful evaluation session, evaluation workshop. Actually. So I hope that uh, our